We're in Scottsdale, Arizona at a Nikan Leadership Conference, and I'm here with Admin Berger. Admin, where are you from? I'm from Norway, and uh, I am married to uh, Angelica from Germany, uh, whom I met when I lived in Stockholm, and she, uh, she lived in, uh, in Hamburg in Germany, and, and we met in Hong Kong on a Nikan trip on our way to Australia. And then we got married in Oslo, so you, you see there's natu totally naturally that we live in Spain today. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Very international. Tell me about your background. What did you do before Nikan? About 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago, I uh, was working as um, uh, an executive vice president and director of international sales. Uh, the title was so long that I can hardly remember it anymore. Uh, for a travel company in um, Stockholm. It was an international travel company based in Stockholm. And uh, before that, I um, worked uh, as a sales representative, sales consultant, and uh, management consultant for the IBM Corporation for quite a few years, uh, a little bit in New York, in Oslo, in Stockholm, and with a business school background before that. It sounds like you had very extensive corporate experience. How did you wind up in Nikia in a network marketing company? What happened? You know, it came to a point where um, I had a good friend in Stockholm who was uh, um, running a couple of outdoor restaurants. And, and uh, he had for years asked me why I wanted to build everybody else's dream instead of pursuing my own dreams and goals and so on. So I had goals. I had always had goals in sports and uh, education and work and so on. But he. Uh, he kept saying this for a few years, and then suddenly one summer um, it struck me a little bit stronger when I, after a normal work week of 60, 80 hours, come to his uh, restaurant in the evening, and uh, he was sitting there playing chess, getting tanned uh, with his customers, having a beer, uh, relaxed, and then he looked at me and he said, God, you look awful. And I said, thank you very much. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I probably did because I was pale, he was tan, I had been working 60 hours that week, he had been just uh, opening his restaurant in the morning, then he went out to play golf and then he came back in the afternoon to play chess and collect the money. And I said there's something wrong with this uh, picture and uh, that's where the conversation hit up, off again. He said uh, something like, um, you know, if you continue what you're doing right now, because I was kind of whining, complaining I guess a little bit about the great life he had. And, and poor me. And then he said, well, if you continue uh, doing what you're doing today, what would be different, you know, three, four years from now? And I said, uh, oh, I don't know. And then we didn't talk more about that. And then he came back to that every once in a while. And then suddenly he said, uh, or he heard that, you know, I come to the point where I said, I think I've got to start my own business in order to take control of my time. You see, even if you're at the top level of a big corporation, somebody else is controlling your time. And um, uh, I came to a point where I read this uh, famous saying that, that um, if you continue doing the same things, uh, nothing will change. You will continue getting the same results as you always did. And a friend of mine said, if you want to have a change in, or a different lifestyle, a different way of living three years from now, that change's got to start now. And uh, when he heard that, he said, have you ever considered, that's a good, good question, said, have you ever considered going into business for yourself, a home-based business, for example, or something like that? And I said, no, what's that? And I got this terrible picture of, uh, you know, this uh, flashback of my mother coming home from, uh, from uh, parties in the evening where she had bought a lot of plastic bottles and, and things. And, and I couldn't really see myself moving from a corporate you know, job like that and a career to, to sell something on home parties for my mother's friends or something. That was not the career move I wanted to make. But as I looked into it, he just invited me. He was very good at that. He didn't push me or pressure me or anything. He just invited me into evaluating a different way of living, a different way of doing business. And how did he do that? Well, did yeah, he give he you material me. or bring you to a presentation? No, actually, we just had a coffee and he, we talked a little bit about it. And then uh, one day he called me. Uh, uh, good timing, by the way. I had been in six countries in four days doing a final presentation of a very big order for our company. And I came back to my office. It was a Thursday afternoon around four and the phone rang. And he said, uh, I thought you would be in now, is it? I said, yeah. And, and then he said, um, uh, 
I wanted to be at this address in the center of Stockholm at five o'clock. And as you know, I started telling him how important I was. You know that I was looking at a long evening at work. I had 64 emails. I had a lot of letters to respond to, etc., etc. And then he said, "Hold on, who's going to die if you don't answer those emails until tomorrow morning?" I said, "Nobody's going to die." He said, "Well, then get yourself down here. Then you got to see this. I have a couple of people I wanted to meet, and you said you wanted some change. You know, this is the time." So he was very confident that you know mm. this is for you could be for you he didn't say you're gonna do this but you should take this chance so I said you know okay uh, went to a presentation thought it was okay and uh, as we always say it takes maybe four or five six exposures to this and you go through a process of information until it hit me that this is good and I looked at the industry, you know, you looked at the market, first of all, you know, with a business school background, being a management consultant and a leader in the business myself, I had some background to evaluate whether this could be a good business or not. And, and I just looked at it and said, well, this is a, a market that is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, how often do you find a market where almost all the people you would talk to in the country, in any country, need what we have? And, and, and nearly nobody has heard of it or have got it. And then, well, I said, okay, it's a phenomenal market. But then I said, uh, the company, I looked into the company. It was an unbelievable company. I, I, I'm in management consulting for top management in a couple of hundred companies in many different industries. And I never, ever seen anything like it. So I thought, great market, great company. Then I looked at the products. And I actually literally walked around in the pres after the presentation and I interviewed a few people. What did these products do for you or your friends or your family? And one story after the other uh, was almost as if it's, you know, too good. <laughs> you know, uh, if it's too good, it's usually too good. It, it's too good to be true. Uh, and uh, I was walking out the door and I remember my friend uh, said to me, he said, Odman, I'm doing this. What about you? I'm going into business with this, you know, what about you? And I got this chill, you know, this uh, kind of, uh, I guess you call it in English, fear of loss. What if he does this and I got the chance and I've seen all the good things about it and what if I don't do it then and then he will take off like a rocket? And I said, I think that would maybe what said, Tom me, said, I, what's the worst thing that could happen? So I signed in. I got a few products, some tools, more information, started to educate myself a little bit so that I knew what I was talking about. And then uh, just uh, hit up from there. And I never looked back. It's, it's, it's been just an unbelievable adventure for the last 13, 14 years. Uh, now, did you start full time or just part time? No, How'd not that really. Uh, I don't really. I mean, th 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 that would probably be one of the best things with this that you don't need to make that big, huge decision to leave what you have and going into something you don't really know what is. So I decided to, to start uh, as I was working. I, I got the. Uh, the uh, allow, uh, how do you say? I was allowed by the the president of the company to move into business by myself. It was not a competing thing to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, then, after a few months, when I saw how good it was, uh, with 150 travel days, 60, 80 hour work weeks, uh, then putting 12, 15 hours of Nikken on top of that uh, was a little too much to, to to do over a long period of time. So I decided to to resign from my job then. But I did that at the same time as I got a management for hire job. So I, I kind of made room for it, but at the same time made sure that I had a financial stability so that, that wouldn't stress me the first few months. And, uh, and then, then I started. And to produce significant income to support yourself with it, what did you do just in an overview in your first few months? How did you launch your business? What did you do? Well, first of all, I had, a, I had a good look at what am I actually selling. And uh, a lot of people get enthusiastic about the products and they go out talking about products. Uh, the sad thing sometimes is that people get into this because they see a way to create financial independence for themselves. But they go out and they work as if they didn't want that. You see, if you only sell products and talk about the products, um, when you don't do that, you don't earn any money. That's not a business, really, it's more a job. 
and when you're not working, you, you don't get paid. And uh, when I looked at it, I saw the philosophy of this company is actually the product. It's the five pillars of health, they call it. And, and uh, uh, they have five different specific areas. Uh, you know, the body, the mind, the family, the society, and the finances. And, and it's actually a total package that we can um, give to people uh, that, uh, that would cover most of the problems, concerns, or, or fulfill most dreams people want to have. And I thought this is a brilliant product. And, and if they don't need the products, the physical products, they might need the personal growth and development that you can achieve. They might need the better finances. They might need a, a, something valuable or worthwhile to work on and make a difference for society. Uh, they make new friends. There's a lot of benefits that you get from this that we need to, to inform people about. Because if, uh, if not one thing fits, then the other thing fits usually. It's all about um, talking with people about them and maybe forget ourselves for a moment and then uh, ask people, listen to, to, to what they say uh, and then offer a solution. We're part of a, well we can say we are a solution provider to, to creating better lives for people and uh, it is a phenomenal way to do it. Now years later, how would you say your life is different than it was before Nikan? Well, it's like night and day. I mean, I mean, I really enjoyed what I was doing for, for a long time, but being in the early 30s, mid-30s, uh, uh, and looking at another 30, 40 years, uh, working 60, 80 hours work weeks, having other people decide what you were going to do, uh, 150 travel days, and I had this interesting conversation with the president of the company every year, where uh, we never really agreed what I was worth. I mean, I brought in billions of business to this company uh, over these years, uh, probably a billion dollars, a little more every year with my organization. So I thought, you know, I, 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 would, I could be worth a little piece of that cake, but, but in a corporate situation, his, his job, of course, was to keep me happy, but not too happy. <laughs> so I, I came to a point that, you know, I want to decide what I'm worth. Uh, and, in, and in order to take control of that, this is what I did. So what has really changed is that today I make that decision. And, and I used this as a vehicle to get into the business for myself, uh, to become an independent entrepreneur. And the good thing about this is that it, it, is, it launched a life of time and money freedom that made me able to do a lot of other things and pursue a lot of other dreams that I had. So today that one really good income stream has become 14, 15 income streams of different other things. And it was Nikken and that opportunity that kicked off the whole thing. And uh, today I do not shuffle much snow. Uh, I, I, you know, I used to live in Norway and Sweden most of the time. Shuffling snow was part of six months of the year. <laughs> um, uh, I do not freeze very often. Uh, we live in southern Spain. We decided, uh, my wife is German, so we looked at Germany, we looked at Scandinavia, and we came to the point, what is the most important for us? And we came to the fact that weather is important. So we decided to live in sunny Spain at Costa del Sol, the south of uh, Malaga. It is um, as close uh, to Africa as you can come almost. The weather is beautiful, like here in Scottsdale, Arizona, most of the year. And uh, from there, uh, we work uh, from home and we fly to the different destinations that we need to go to, to work. Uh, a lot of work I do at home, via video conferencing, Skype, uh, uh, etc., etc., behind my PC and with a good phone. I usually work behind the desk inside in the morning and then around midday I, I take the office out to the terrace and then I sit in the sun or under the umbrella and overlooking the golf courses and, and, and just having a wonderful time talking to wonderful people. It's a, it's a, you could say it's very different from uh, getting up four or five in the morning to take the seven o'clock uh, uh, flight from Stockholm to London and sit there for 48 hours in a hotel uh, meeting room in order to return midnight Friday night, for example. It, it is very different. And finally, what would you say to uh, someone who is a, is a successful professional or someone who people would look at him as think he's very successful, maybe he's dissatisfied? Why Nikan? Why network marketing? Was that a big jump for you? It was a big jump. Um, 
I was uh, uh, not aware of how big a jump it was uh, at first because I never heard of it. I had no clue what it was. Uh, some sort of, uh, when they said network marketing, I, uh, I thought it had something to do with the internet or, or networks to do because I've been working in the IT industry. So I didn't really know. And once I got into it, I went to people and asked people for advice. I went to a couple of headhunters that usually called me every month and, or a couple, of, at least a few times a year to ask if I was interested in shifting jobs and so on. And I asked them for advice and uh, they, they gave me uh, some negative advice about it. And they said, you know, I wouldn't do that if I want to pursue this. And I said, why not? And uh, then they started uh, saying things about the industry and I said, well, you know, I don't want to do something that will jeopardize my career or anything. So please tell me your experience. You seem to be very experienced in this. And then they got, you know, they didn't, they couldn't because they had never experienced it. And, and this is what we very often experience in this industry uh, or, or human beings in general. We are programmed to look for what's wrong with things rather than what's right with things. And, we express opinions about things that we have no idea about. So a good advice is to, at least from my experience, is to ask people that are proven by results that they know what they're talking about. Um, you know, we wouldn't ask a dentist on how to fly an airplane, would you? I mean, you ask people that know what they're talking about. So um, I got advice from some really good people that have produced large businesses in this industry. I collected uh, evidence, so to speak, uh, or experiences from these people from, from North America, from Germany, from other places. Uh, people with excellent backgrounds before also. It was uh, people from all walks of life, actually. Everything from secretaries to uh, musicians to, uh, to, uh, to a lawyer who closed his three companies and started this whole thing in Germany. And I came to the fact that Instead of being so worried about what everyone else thinks, um, we should actually use our five senses to collect information as we do anyway, but th then not let that information go unfiltered down and impact us emotionally, but rather think. We have been equipped with some intellectual faculties. We can actually reason. We can build our own image of what's going on. We can choose our perception about what we're actually looking at. And I chose to do that. And, and uh, I came to the point that, you know, if so many people, uh, men, women, young, old, with all kinds of different backgrounds, have succeeded in building phenomenal businesses uh, with this opportunity, why not me? And I made that decision for myself. And if you're watching this and, 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 and evaluating whether you, this would be right for you, uh, my encouragement to you would be that you actually decide to, okay, collect information, but choose your sources carefully. Talk to the people that are really proven by results that they know what they're talking about. And then think for yourself and make your decision, not let other people make that decision for you. Uh, because if you do, uh, you could miss out on the unbelievable opportunity that has proven over so many years that it is a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity. And as a matter of fact, we just we haven't even gotten start gotten started. This is just the beginning, and I can see that you know over the years to come, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. When we started, there was really not that many tools, not that many uh, ways of educating yourself. We just uh, we were on fire, did things that we felt were right. We did all the wrong things you can do, learned from that, and now we've done quite a few good things. And you know. The way it is today, when you get in here, it's more like getting a key to to the right place, and and everything is there for you. Phenomenal training, great mentors, proven results, phenomenal products, great company, and a market that is unbelievable. So, um, I wish you the best of luck with uh, with whatever you do. But if you uh, uh, if I could give you one piece of advice, if you listen to this, evaluate this opportunity. Decide to go back to the person that gave you the chance to see this and, and let them take you through a process of information. It's like uh, looking at a commercial. Usually we need to see it a few times. Uh, this may be four, five, six exposures to or, or, or meetings regarding what this is. You might have questions, get them answered and make your decision. Don't let anyone else make it for you. Very logical. And finally, 
How do you feel now on a daily basis earning high residual income? What, what's the feeling in your, in your heart and mind uh, as you go about your daily life? It's quite unbelievable. Uh, I think of it in so many different ways because I have friends. I talked to a friend the other day. He, uh, he's very successful in building uh, a business uh, in Eastern Europe. He's a Norwegian guy and he built a great business. But he, he told me that you know he, he invested millions of euros. Uh, he cannot count the number of evenings he went to bed without knowing if he could pay the salaries to his people the day after. They struggled seven, eight years before they started earning money. Now they're a very successful company. And, and, and I, uh, uh, you know, if you compare that to what we're doing, it's just an unbelievable thing. It's a small investment in time and money. Um, and you can build a phenomenal international, even global business uh, that will take you all over the place uh, if you want to. And I think about it as, uh, uh, you know, thinking of, of my wife, uh, Angelica, who uh, actually got into this business uh, from a secretarial background. And the main reason why she went into it was that her boss uh, that she worked for, um, he decided to close his companies to start this. He was a lawyer uh, and um, financial consultant, etc. And, and he closed his company. So she actually decided to start this not to lose her friends because she had many of her friends in the company. And um, she went home and talked to her friends and family about this and, and they know her as a secretary and as a sister and as a friend, not as a businesswoman. So they said, you know, you're much too nice. I and mean, you're, how can you expect to build a business and sell? You never sold anything really before. And uh, luckily for her, she, she trusted the people that had recruited her uh, that had shown her to not be afraid of large numbers or going into business or anything. They said, if you don't, you know, if you ever doubt yourself, then believe in our belief in you. Mm. And she really did. And uh, believe it or not, it is the truth. Within a couple of years, she earned more per month than she earned before as a secretary every year. She literally turned her former yearly income into becoming her monthly income uh, in a very short period of time. I'm not saying that everybody can do that or everybody will not do that because there is a price to pay. Uh, you need to, to, to invest uh, time, uh, invest a little money and, and, and in your own self, in, in your development. Uh, however, uh, when I look upon it, I was looking forward to 30, 40 more years of 150 travel days and 60, 80, hour, uh, 80 hours work weeks. And, uh, and uh, when uh, Reed Nelson, a good friend and mentor of mine in this industry, said, uh, you know, Altman, if you, if you put in much less than that, let's say start with 12, 15 hours, then maybe move into a little few more hours as, as you kick this off. You can literally do this what most people are not willing to do for three to five years and experience a life uh, that most people would only dream of for the rest of your life. And I thought to myself, you know, three to five years, if I focus, if I dedicate myself, and if I'm disciplined enough to do this for three to five years, uh, just the hope of having that kind of lifestyle for the next 30, 40, 50 years was enough for me to make that decision. And, uh, and trust me, it has come true. It, it, it is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much.